Hey guys! So I'm here today to do my September wrap up and October to be red pile. I want to first off apologize for the lighting in this video. I am filming this at night and I don't have the best lighting. I just have what's going on up there. So um, I knew though if I didn't film this tonight I wouldn't get to it for the rest of this week because the rest of my week is pretty busy so I would have no time to film. But I figured I better, it's better to have a video where it's not the best of lighting than to have no video at all. But I'm really excited for my picks that I have for October and I also read some really good books for September that I am excited to tell you guys about. The first book I finished in September was The Truth About Forever by Sarah Destin. This is my very first Sarah Destin book and I was told by a lot of people this one was their favorite. So I was, this is of course the one I wanted to pick up first. And I really enjoyed it. They gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. And I think if you're just in the market, if like you love Sarah Dustin, if you haven't read any of her books, definitely check this out. It's just a really fun, like, contemporary novel, I guess you can say. And basically it's about this girl whose boyfriend gets sent away to what she calls brain camp, because he's really smart. And they end up going on this break, or whatever. Her boyfriend's an idiot in this book. I'm just warning you. I couldn't stand the dude. I don't even know how she lived with dating this guy, like, that's how much I hated him. He's probably in, like, my top five least favorite people so far that I've read about. He, he's in one of the big, big positions. So, um, he goes off and they get this big, not like breakup, but they make this deal that when he gets back they'll reevaluate their relationship and see where they stand. But at the same time, she meets this guy named Wes, who works for a catering company type thing, named Wish. And she ends up starting to work for them, and ends up, I mean, of course, falling for this guy, and he falls for her. But he also has a girlfriend that they're on break, so it's just kind of like a complicated mess. But it's really good if you like a storyline like that. I know I do. So um, I gave it the 4 out of 5. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. Um, go read it if you haven't, and yeah. The next book I read was The Duff, The Designated Ugly Fat Friend by Cody Kuttlinger. I won't go too much into this book because I did a review on it, and I will link it down below in case you haven't seen it. Um, I give it 5 out of 5 stars. It's a really good book if you're into, like, real world issues. Like, I don't know, this book, it, it was just like, I don't know, um, I guess, I don't know if it's like contemporary or what, but I like to think of these type of books as like things you can re not like necessarily relate to, but it just seems like the characters are more real than a fantasy book. So that's what I really liked about this book. So if you're really into like situations where someone comes from a tough home life and whatnot, go read this. It's really good, especially if you've ever felt like the duff. I know I have, so I loved this book. It was really good. The next book I read was Megan Mead's Guide to the McGowan Boys by Kate Bryan. This is my first Kate Bryan book as well. It's pretty much a month where I've read first from all these authors. So I really liked what I read. I kind of want to pick up another book from her. I gave this a uh, 4 out of 5 stars. It's really good. The only two things that irritated me was it was written in third person. I don't know, I like reading things from the character's point of view more so than having a story narrated by someone. That's just me. I haven't read too many stories told in third person, so it's kind of weird. And then I also, I don't know, I wasn't as thrilled with how it ended. It just kind of seemed like open-ended. Like, I, I didn't think it had that much closure. Maybe it was just me, but I just didn't feel like I had enough closure. And if you've read this, did you adore Finn as much as I did? Because... I love Finn reading this book, that's what I just want to say. If you're not familiar with what this book is about, it's basically this girl gets, her parents are in the army, so they move around a lot, and she gets kind of used to it, but she's been in the U.S. for a certain amount of time, and finally, like, lived in a state where she was there for, like, two years, got on really good, a really good soccer team, was about to be called captain, and her parents dropped the bomb on her that they're going to be moving to Korea. And she doesn't want to go, so they make a, like, a condition with her that she can stay in the U.S. if she moves in with her family friends, the McGowan. So, I kind of felt bad for her, because she still had to move away for her, from her school and her friends. I mean, granted, she still get a, did get to stay in the U.S., but I would still feel like, oh, this kind of sucks. 
I have to move away from all of that. So she goes and lives with the McGowans, but the funny twist to it is it's a house filled with seven boys. And right then, I just knew I had to read this. I felt bad for the poor girl. Like, they put her through some crap. Um, if, like, if this were me, I would have been gone by day two. Like, I just, oh, I don't know. The two older ones are probably my favorites. Evan and Finn. But then Evan made me mad, like, halfway through. If you've read it, you know why. Um, but then they didn't like me more, and I was all for Finn. I've loved Finn the whole book, so who else did I like? There's another person that liked in here. Sean, the older one, that you like, the oldest one, that you really don't hear anything about. I really liked him. So, yeah, random side note if you've read this, but that's why it got a 4 out of 5. But still, I really, really enjoyed it. I loved it, actually, and I want to read more books from her. So, if you haven't read this, go check it out. It's really good. The next book that I read, I kind of wish I waited and read this month because it would have been a perfect book to read for Halloween. And that is Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendra Blake. This is probably my favorite of all the books I've read this month, so I give it a 5 out of 5 stars. I also did a review on this, so I won't go too much into detail on it, but I will also link that review down below. And um, I will say that I've had people ask me if, like, any recommendations for, like, a good Halloween book? And I know this one's been thrown around a lot, but I really do recommend, if you are looking for a kind of scary themed book to read for October, definitely check this out. I've heard, like, people kind of told me it was scary, but I really wasn't expecting, like, a lot to be scared about in it. But when I read it, like, okay, if you guys have read this, I'm not going to spoil, this is not spoilery, so don't worry. But that whole part with, um, Cass and his mom in their house, when she was arguing with him to leave. And that whole attic thing where they stop because, the, you know, the whole attic part and the person's coming down, that freaked me out. I had goosebumps like crazy, and it takes a lot for me to get scared in a book. And I don't know why that particular part scared me. You guys might be thinking I'm a wimp. But I don't know. I was just, I was really got so into it at that part, and I had myself in that position. And I knew if that were me, and it's just like, you stop talking, and you're like, oh my gosh, what, what's up there? It freaky, like, oh, and then it just comes down, and yeah, that freaked me out, so definitely check this out. If you haven't, it's got a really good story behind it. I was totally taken back by how much I was, I was expecting to like it, but I came out loving it, so yeah, definitely a good book. Check this out. And then the last book I finished this month was Marked by PC and Kristen Cass. I gave this one a four out of five stars. It's a really good setup for the series. I've been kind of hesitant to read this, I think, because I've heard so many mixed reviews on it. Um, the only thing that concerns me going into this was, I knew that there was, like, a lot of love interest for the girl, and so far she's only got the one, and I really do like him, and it kind of makes me sad that she's going to have multiple, but, um, basically what this is about is, um, and there's just, like, the world there. Everyone knows about vampires. It's a common thing. And people kind of get m what's called marked at, like, around teenager age. And what happens is you get a crescent moon on your forehead, and you're marked to possibly become a vampire. And once that happens, um, you basically get shunned from society, which I thought was really sad. Like, once this main character, Zoe, gets marked, her best friend just kind of, like, backs away from her and is like, whoa. I felt horrible. Like, that would be awful. Like, just getting shunned from your whole life, like, her family throughout this whole book doesn't even contact her, like, that's really sad, so, it's kind of the setup with it, and you basically, she gets, goes to the school for, which is called the House of Night, and that's where all these kids go who get marked, and they're called fledglings, and they're called that until they go through what's called the change, and basically, if you are able to go through the change and become a vampire, you live. But if your body rejects it, you die. So not everyone makes it through to become a vampire. So that's kind of what this is about. Um, I mean, there's also a lot of other things going on. I'm pretty sure most of you have read this. But if you haven't, go check it out. It's a really good book. All right, so that was my September wrap-up. My next is my October to be read pile. And for this month, I wanted to kind of read books that were, like I said, kind of like thriller, suspenseful, scary, all the above. So I tried to pick books based on that or just had some like paranormal aspect to them. So with that, the first book I picked was 
The Body Finder by Kimberly During. I can't believe I put this off for so long. I remember buying this and being so excited to read this because I've heard a lot of good things about it. So if you're not familiar, it's about this girl who can kind of sense dead bodies and sense like a killer and how they killed them and whatnot. So she's kind of like a medium, I'm going to say. And it mentions that like the killer ends up going after her. It sounds really good and this is something totally up my alley. I love books like that. So I know a lot of people have loved this book and yeah. So I'll, I'll see if I want to continue the series. I hope I do. So I wanted to give this a shot. The next book I got, I've had this book for literally ever, I think. Um, I got this a while ago, and it's not like a really known book at all. I can't remember what bookstore I got it at, but I just read the synopsis and knew I had to get it, and it's called Blood Games by Richard Lehman. And once I remembered what it was about, I knew I had to read this for October because it's perfect. It's basically about these five uh, women who were college friends, and every year they made this pact to meet up and go somewhere on vacation. And each girl gets to pick, like, every year it changes girls who get to pick where they go. So this year one of the girls picks the Totem Pole Lodge, which is in the middle of nowhere in the woods. And so they go there, and it turns out that all these gruesome things that happened there, and it mentions on the back that the most gruesome is still yet to come. So I have to read this now because that got me really intrigued and sounds like a really good thriller, scary novel for October. So this might be the next book I read actually. I think this is going to be what I pick up next. So yeah. The next book I have is also another popular one and it is Jessica's Guide to Dating on the Dark Side by Beth Fantasky. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about this book. I honestly think the reason I put this off for so long is the cover is really, really cheesy. I don't like it. I don't know what it is. It's just... Uh, but everyone says, don't even look at this. It's such a good book. Basically about this girl who finds out she's a Romanian vampire princess and is taken away. And yeah, that's all I really know about it. So I want to read it, get my two cents on it, and see how much I like it and if it lives up to the hype. The next book I could have to read is Sweet Evil by Wendy Higgins. I was actually requested to do a review on this um, by a couple people, so I will definitely read this and review it this month. Um, my goal was to at least do two reviews a month, so this will definitely be one of them, and I'll try to pick at least one other one to do a review on. So, yeah. Um, basically, this is about like fallen angels that are bad influences on people, and it follows the story of this southern belle it says and a fallen angel comes to her and he's trying to get her to do it's like the guy that you don't want to bring home to your dad I guess you can say and so there's obviously like I think a love story going on it but it sounded really interesting and I haven't seen too many reviews on this so I kind of wanted to get my two cents on it and see how I like it the next book I know I'm going to get to this month is The Trade by PC and Kristen Cast, and this is the second book in the House of Night series, so I'm anxious to find out what happens next with Zoe and go from there. And the last book I picked to read this month is The Immortal Rules by Julie Kagawa. I've heard a lot, a lot of great things about this. There's a lot of hype around it, so I really hope I do like this. Um, if you're not fam familiar with the movie Daybreakers, it, when I read the synopsis, like I said in my other, when I hauled it, uh, it reminds me of that movie. It's basically the world is now vampires and the human population is scarce and it follows this girl who's been trying to hide from it and ends up getting turned into one and then she's on the hunt for a cure. So it sounds really, really good. So I'm anxious to read this and see how I end up liking it. Alright, so that was my September wrap-up and October to be read pile. I did pick out like six books to read this month, and to some of you it's probably like nothing, but for me, I, don't, I just, I have a lot on my plate right now. I have, I'm a full-time student, and I also have a job, so it leaves very minimal time between like homework, school, and work to get a lot of reading time in. So, I'm kind of nervous with this month. I do have my midterms coming up next week, so... I do hope I get to read some of this. If there's no promises, I'm going to get to all these books, but I'm making it my goal too. So I'm really going to try to get through all six of these. And yeah, so I think that's all I have for you guys. And 
I guess I will talk to you later. Leave any comments down below if you've read any of these books. Let me know how you liked them and what your thoughts were of them. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!